containers dockers and kubernetes three different words but linked to each other in a way you won't want to isolate them if you really want to create a true masterpiece application hello and welcome back to the tech blackboard in today's episode i will tell you everything about containers that you need to know for the az 900 exam and we will also compare bare metal servers with virtual machine versus containers and this is our section 2.2.4 that comes under the skill measure described as your architecture and services overall a very important section as it alone commands 35 to 40% of the total exam questions you can also download the updated syllabus for az 900 exam from the link given in the description box so let's begin our learning by looking at the official microsoft documentation on containers and friends you can very well see that i have taken this documentation directly from the microsoft course on azure fundamentals so let's see how microsoft describe azure containers it says while azure virtual machines are excellent way to reduce cost versus the investment that are necessary for physical hardware they are still limited to a single operating system per virtual machine If you want to run multiple instances of an application on a single host machine containers are an excellent choice. So what exactly are containers? Well Microsoft says that containers are virtualization environment much like running multiple virtual machine on a single physical host and you can run multiple containers on a single physical or virtual host unlike virtual machines you do not manage the operating system for containers virtual machines appear to be an instance of an operating system that you can connect and manage containers are lightweight and designed to be created scaled out and stop dynamically and it's possible to create and deploy virtual machine as application demand increases but containers are a lighter weight more agile method containers are designed to allow you to respond to the changes on demand with containers you can quickly restart if there is a crash or hardware interruptions one of the most popular container engines is docker which is supported by microsoft azure And friends after this definition there is a very good video that compare virtual machines to containers you can most definitely watch this video we will also compare virtual machines and containers in this very video so let's see what else microsoft has given you can also read what is azure container instances and how can you use containers in your solution and you can see this is all what microsoft has given in azure fundamental course The very next topic here is describe azure functions but we will cover containers in a lot more detail in this course as this is one of the most trending technologies these days in cloud computing Before directly jumping to containers we should first understand virtual machines but even before containers and virtual machines let's take a step back and understand how the businesses used to operate on conventional servers so friends in good old days there used to be a dedicated server for each task and you can call them conventional servers or bare metal servers so bare metal servers are granddaddies of all the server variations that we see today a bare metal server is a physical computer that is single tenant only the best part is that the bare metal servers give us full control over the hardware such as cpu network interface cards memory and so on and so forth so this is the first layer of the bare metal architecture and now on the top of hardware resides host operating system it could be windows linux or any other operating system of choice and now my friends on the host operating system we have our top layer and this top layer consists of software stack or the application that runs on the operating system it could be your database your website or just microsoft office so this is the very high level architecture of a conventional bare metal server we have hardware and then we have software now let's check out some pros and cons of using bare metal servers looking at the pros or the benefits so bare metal servers are physically isolated servers and they are dedicated to a single operation and that's why they offer better performance so normally companies have multiple servers one for each task for example one server for database another server could be hosting the web application acting as a web server in fact one server could be an email server as well and friends as i just mentioned these bare metal servers are isolated server 
That's why they are quite secure. So the entire thought process behind Bay Metal Server is one server, one task. So you can say that each server, like a boss, is saying that I am a specialist in whatever I do. And doesn't it sound really great to you? Well, do not jump to the conclusion that soon. Now that we have seen what Bay Metal Servers are good at, let's check out some of the cons for them. To better understand the cons of bare metal servers, let me give you some visuals so that you can really appreciate where the bare metal server lagged and why did we need virtual machines. So friends, let's say that for most of your business, you're running all your applications on Windows operating system. But now due to changing time and technology, you're launching a new app for your customers that should be compatible with Linux operating system and Mac operating system. Problem is that your bare metal server can only run one operating system Currently, you are running Windows, so even if you are not utilizing the full capacity of your Windows server, you still would need to buy separate servers, one for Linux and other for Mac operating system. And due to all these problems, bare metal servers are expensive, hard to manage, hard to scale and lot of resources are getting wasted. And you very well know that when you are wasting resources, this means a lot of money is also getting wasted. So let's fix this problem introducing virtual machines. So similar to the bare metal servers, virtual machines also starts with a hardware layer containing CPU, NIC, storage and other hardware components. And on top of this, we have host operating system. But this is where everything starts changing. So what are the changes? Instead of directly hosting your application on top of operating system, we now have a special piece of software called hypervisor. And it is this hypervisor that manages virtual machines. And virtual machines could be Windows, Linux and Mac operating system. And now my friends, please pay attention. Hypervisor creates an abstraction layer over the hardware so that multiple operating system can run alongside each other. Each virtual machine has its own guest operating system and accordingly you can run multiple different apps on each operating system. And please note that there can be multiple combination possible. For example, host operating system could be Windows and you can install Linux or Mac operating system on top of it. In fact, you can also install another Windows virtual machine on a Windows host operating system. Likewise, you can have Linux as host operating system installed Windows virtual machine or Mac so basically you can have all the combinations and friends please note there are two major types of hypervisors the first one is type 1 or also known as bare metal hypervisor and the second one is type 2 which is also known as hosted hardware now friends a deep dive on hypervisors is out of the syllabus for AZ900 but a quick look won't harm the most commonly deployed hypervisor is type 1 or bare metal hypervisor where virtualization software is installed directly on the hardware where the operating system is normally installed. And while the bare metal hypervisor run directly on the computing hardware, hosted hypervisors run on the operating system of the host machine. So you can say that type 1 is a hardware virtualization and type 2 is an operating system virtualization. So until now we have understood how conventional bare metal servers work and how virtual machines solved some of the key issues with the bare metal servers. It is now time that we talk about containers. So let's take a step forward and here comes containers. As always, let's begin with hardware. Nothing is going to happen without the real hardware. And once again, on top of hardware, we have host operating system. So until now, everything in containers looks exactly the same as we saw in virtual machines or bare metal servers. But this is where the thing starts to get really interesting. So you can consider containerization to be a lightweight version of virtualization. And like virtual machines, we have bare metal hardware and the host operating system but instead of virtualizing the hardware with a hypervisor we virtualize the operating system itself with a piece of special software called the container engine and friends on top of this container engine you can run as many container as you want each of these containers has its own application environment isolated from each other and the beauty is that all the resources needed to run the application are packaged together so that all the applications can run anywhere and due to this package nature, containers are very scalable and portable. In a nutshell, a container is a lightweight and standalone package of an application with all its dependencies like libraries, 
frameworks and runtimes. So containers are lightweight and require much less hardware resources to run than that of virtual machines. A bare metal server can host significantly more containers than virtual machine. And since each container runs as a native process of the host operating system, they are much faster to start. And all this makes container even easier to deploy and maintain at scale. So friends, that's all for this video. Today we have seen a brief overview of the containers. We understood what are they, why they are even needed, what are the benefits of containers, why they are so lightweight and what's the high level architecture of containers. In the next video, we will deep dive on containers and understand their connection with Dockers and why do we need Kubernetes. A lot of exciting learning on Azure is coming up. So please subscribe and press that bell icon so that you are always learning the latest in Microsoft Azure and please share our videos to help people around you to learn the latest cloud technologies. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.